Welcome to the Referrals Podcast, the show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. If you want to build a company with an army of ambassadors and raving fans who speak highly of you and refer you willingly, you are in the right place. Let's meet your hosts, Chris Angel and Michael Mayer. Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of the Referrals Podcast. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, and I'm here with your host, Michael Mayer. And welcome back, Jody Osofsky, to the Referrals Podcast. Hello, Jody. Hi, thank you. Yeah, well, great episode when we had you on last time, uh, whenever that was. And so it was great to, uh, I think we got into some really cool conversations around the importance of your relationships. And um, today, we get to explore that as a referral partner, like networking with referral partners Yes. Michael, anything you want to do to set this up uh, in terms of referral partners and the power of that? Yeah, awesome. Welcome, Jody O. Again, it was like January of 2019 when we had you on, right? So it's, it's one of those where so good, we had to bring you back, Jody O. Amazing. So, uh, you know, we talk about networking a lot. And the beauty of networking is that you can have many different approaches. And, uh, you know, something we haven't talked a lot about is um, networking groups and, and how to maximize your networking group experience and opportunity. And Jody was just sharing that like 40% of her business uh, recently was coming from a networking group. So it's almost like, I mean, 40% is significant. Yeah. So, you know, what are you doing? Where are we going with that? And so on and so forth. And that is some of the feedback we're getting out there is just like, hey, I'm new to a city, I'm new to an area. How is a way that I can ramp up my referrals and my business very quickly? And I will tell you that networking is the fastest way to do that. Networking is, is like the East Australian current uh, for, for swimming, right? You, yes. you can barely move and uh, you will shoot forward faster than you ever thought. And that's how networking is uh, in most cities is that once you get into that current, that all of a sudden you're, you're pinballing between awesome influential people mm -hmm. who can help your business. Yeah. Jody, to set it up for those that didn't catch our last episode we did with you um, and they don't know you, give us a sense of like, where are you in the world? And then um, as it relates to this conversation today, give us some numbers around the transactions you did around in and around your networking groups and referral partners. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah, in the Valley, Salt Lake Valley. I work um, the surrounding counties and areas, but the majority of my business is in the Salt Lake uh, County proper. And um, Utah is a fun place. It's like, I, I would say it's like the mafia. Once you think you're going to get out and move away and experience other things, it just pulls you right back in. <laughs> nice. So I think I'm a lifer. Um, so you know, uh, I forgot what I was going to How say. long have you done real estate there? <laughs> How long have I done real estate? I have been in real estate for 19 years now. Wow. Uh, Full-time since day one. The first five years of my career, I worked under my mom, who was a top agent in the area at the time, mm -hmm. and stayed under her wing a little too long and finally decided to, well, I don't know if I got pushed out of the nest or decided to, to jump out myself. And uh, it, all, it was also the best thing that could have ever happened for sure. Yeah. So tell us about that moment, right? So, yeah. so you, you were kind of, uh, was it second generation or third generation second. realtor? Okay. So, so uh, you're out on your own, right? I mean, either pushed or, or on your own flying, right? You either jumped out of the nest or were pushed out of the nest. We still haven't seen the footage from that moment. Yep. Uh, but, but, you know, now you're, you're flying on your own, right? What, what, uh, you know, what's going through your mind? What fears do you have? What, what are you nervous about? What oh, you about? I was convinced I was going to screw something up horribly and people would hate me or I'd get sued or hmm. yeah, hmm. I just, I relied very heavily on her and her expertise, which, which is why I'm the agent that I am today for sure yeah. is learning from her and mentoring, um, under her. But uh, yeah, it, it was terrifying. I thought for sure I'd screw things up really. And you had really borrowed off her network and her business for a while, right? Absolutely. I mean, I was Julie's daughter. Her, yeah, yeah, her network business. Yeah. So, so what did you do first? What, like to get your own first client, and which had to be tough because in the marketplace, you two had to have been looked at together, right? I yeah. mean, so 
So how, you know, what, what did you do to get started with your own network? I really focused on, um, my, my personal sphere, my friend group. Friends your and, age, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and really focused on buyers cause I was young. Mm -hmm. And um, then it went to how do I meet people outside of my mom's circle and what's the best way to do that? One was open houses for sure. Yeah. But I think the thing that has fed my business the most and um, will continue to is getting out there and, and experiencing different networking events because that's the quickest way to new circles of people. Yeah. So you combine open houses with networking events. So yes. the open houses were hopefully to get active buyers in the marketplace. Yeah. And, and some of those buyers are sellers as well. Yeah. And the other thing you did is you, you went to networking events to build your own network. Yeah. Right? I really well, want to dig into that because I think networking events are interesting to people because you feel like, oh, I can go meet people, but it's not an immediate, right. it's not like there's somebody looking for my service today. So yeah. I'm really curious how you've cultivated these groups to produce the results they've produced for you. So it's trial and error. Um, the biggest thing I would say is not all networking events and, and groups mm. are created equal mm, and awesome. not everyone is a fit for me. Just like, uh, you know, I'm not a fit for everyone out there or else there wouldn't be any other realtors in Salt Lake. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's important to date before you get married, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So you, you get out there and, and, you know, I was too quick to commit to my first chamber that I joined, mm -hmm. just thought, well, I live in this city, I better go join their chamber. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it was awful. And it very easily could have soured me on networking in general. And, and that what, word, what soured you on it. What, what were the negatives? What were the things that people should avoid in that? So I'd walk in the door. First of all, they did not have frequent um, events yeah. once a month they had a networking lunch and once a month is not frequent enough to get to know people to be able to build relationships mm -hmm. and what I, I saw there over and over and over again is people would walk up to me and as I was they'd ask me a question and before I could even answer, they were looking away at the next person they wanted to go drop a card on mm -hmm. and they walked around with their cards in their hands and just you know, Make it, made it gross. rain with business cards. Like a meat market. It's gross. Yeah, it really was. And and you'd walk away with a stack of cards and not have a clue why you'd ever follow up <laughs> yeah. with any of these. Cards. And you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to no. because yeah. if you followed up with them, it turned into an hour long sales, sales pitch. pitch. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So um, the frequency, but you know, I just and the way they set up their events. So we'd go and you'd have to get there early if you wanted to even have the weird commission breath made making it rain with your business cards thing. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as the time was that the event began, mm -hmm. you sat down and listened to a speaker. And as soon as the speaker was done, the event was done and mm -hmm. everyone had been there so long, they left. Mm -hmm. So there was no networking at the networking event. Mm -hmm. Really, it was sit and listen to a speaker and it, it was, it was just, it felt creepy. What's your definition of networking? Networking to me is talking with a potential referral partner or a current referral partner about how I can help them with their business. And I'm looking for ways I can refer them because really I'm no good to them if I can't refer them and I don't like to lead people on. I, I'm pretty direct, always have been, yeah. and, and if I can't refer you, um, I, I, not in a rude way, I think I have decent bedside manner about it, but I, I don't want them to waste their time and effort on me. Yeah. Um, so it, it's strategic, and if I don't feel like I'm a good fit, but I think they're you know, good people, then I do my best to connect them with the right person that can help them with their business. Yeah. And I think you hit on a really, really strong point there is that, you know, networking is to meet potential referral sources. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, you need to have a certain number of appointments a week yeah. as a salesperson, as a business development person, as the CEO, as an entrepreneur, you need to have a certain amount that you should have probably eight to 10 appointments a week, right? 
-hmm. So the first thing you'd like to do is they you'd like to have all 10 of them be sales appointments, right? People have expressed an interest in your service, a yeah. buyer or seller, you meet with them and convert. But, but uh, for most people, that's unrealistic that you would have eight to 10 of those uh, in a week. So guess what? What if you had two of those? Well, you have eight other appointments. What we should do with those eight other appointment times is we should not necessarily meet with potential clients. We should meet with potential referral sources. Mm -hmm. We should have eight one-on-one -on -one appointments with potential salespeople for our business. And bo oh, by the way, they are unpaid salespeople, right? Uh, it's a volunteer army that they're volunteering for here yep. to be a part of your army of ambassadors. So it's like, all right, if you're going to dedicate yourself to, to five to 10 one-on-ones a week, if, if you can't fill them all with clients or potential clients, then fill the rest of them with, with meetings with potential salespeople, potential referral partners, right? And, and then you're in this habit of having one-on-ones and having appointments and, and uh, having that type of conversation. Yeah. So, you know, I think that um, even if I don't feel like I can refer them on a regular basis, it is good to sit down with them and get to know them a little bit better um, because my goal is to be the ultimate resource in life for my clients. Mm. I want them to call me over everything. I want them to call me if they need to remodel. I want them to call me if hail damaged their roof. I want them to call me if they think they might want to have another kid. I just, <laughs> but I, Always I call Judy. My clients. Uh -huh. Right. That's, that was the idea behind it. So I want the, the obscure, one of my, um, actually I'm having a one-to-one -one with him after we're done with this, is my IT guy. And he repairs computers. He builds all the computers here in my office for me. And anytime I have clients that are in business with electronic woes, I can refer them to Patrick. He's my guy. Mm -hmm. So although it doesn't seem like a natural connection, being a realtor and an IT person, it really is because we can feed each other business. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, yeah. love it. What, Jody, what did you, so coming off the experience of being soured by the first networking group, what, what sort of criteria did you start to create for what would be a good networking group? I wanted to be around people that were real and um, not just in it for them. Mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted to be around people that I liked and that I could be friends with. It wasn't a requirement, but I wanted to feel like I could be friends with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to have things in common and, and especially um, the, the operating your business on a high ethics and, and, you know, high standards for their business and how they take care of their clients. That's huge to me. And yeah. a room full so, of givers. Yeah. Right. Versus a yeah. room full of takers, you know, yeah. So you go to a chamber event, it was a room full of takers, it was very awkward, and you didn't need a water filtration system, and even if it was going to kill you, which yeah. is what they said it was going to do, right? Do you know your water's killing you? Yeah. I love you too. How are you? Hey, My name is Jody, you, you know? So right, it's, it's, right. it's one of those where, you know, you want to be in a room full of givers, right? And, yeah. and that's, and that's, it sounds like what you found, right? Yeah. How, find, how many groups did you go through or, or you know, what did it look like as you evolved into this, into this networking group you're in? You know, I probably, at least a dozen. Um, and then I landed on a model of. A, we can, know, we can I, say it. It's all good. B and I. Yeah. In fact, you know what? If, if we're going to say, you know, so here's the deal, right? B and yeah. I, Dr. Ivan Meisner, founder of, of, uh, of BNI and the Referral Institute. And he's also the Network Times, uh, New York Times bestselling author of Masters of Sales, along with other books. And he said, every real estate needs to read this book, 7L, and give it to all their referral partners. In 7L, Michael J. Mayer shows you how to build a recession-proof network, a mm -hmm. shift-proof network, right? So how do you make a recession-proof network? You network at places like a BNI and like what Jody's talking about here. There, there's people talking about a shift in the market. And in some cases, it's already happened. Yeah. And in many cases, the answer, the solution is, is to have this, the, the best time to build an army of ambassadors, ambassadors being unpaid salespeople for you and people who speak highly of you and refer your, your business willingly. 
uh, was 10 years ago. The second best time to build this army is today, yeah. right? And, and so this is so pertinent to what Jody's talking about right now. There are so many people who are getting into networking for the very first time. And, and this, is, this is such a valuable topic for them. And listen, BNI is one of those solutions and it's a very good solution. Yeah. It's, it was really one of the first organizations that, that, that organized and coordinated uh, accountable networking groups, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so Jody, you, you did you try other accountable networking groups before, yeah. or did you just get into something? Get no, in. I I definitely tried other. I tried other chambers. I tried other networking groups, and um, the thing that was missing. There's a few things. Uh, one huge one is accountability and mm -hmm. attendance. And if there's not, if they're free then there's no accountability for attendance. And mm -hmm. if you're not there every week, I can't show you how amazing I am. And I can't learn about how amazing you are. That's and amazing. it has to be weekly. I knew it had to be weekly with all the research and everything you can do. You need regular contact with these people and that is weekly. And, and it has to be purposeful. It has to have a system attached to it so that when new people check it out, it it shows them how productive you can be. So the thing I loved is they track all their numbers. And so I know exactly when I go see a different um, uh, networking group or different BNI chapter, I know how productive and, and congruent that group is together. And so I visited various BNI, BNI chapters mm -hmm. before I joined one. I actually tried to start my own because as a realtor, it's very difficult to get into one. And um, I, I found my guys. And for, well, I say that because for a few years, I was the only girl in it. I now have it infused more estrogen and there are more females in there. But um, it, it's just, we're friends. We do barbecues together. We, we really know, like, and trust each other. And we are constantly um, the top, per member in, in thank you for closed business, mm -hmm. meaning each one of our members makes more money um, than any other chapter out there. Hmm. That's awesome. In our state anyway. So how, it's so good because I feel like there's a lot of people who will try out uh, groups and they're mm -hmm. like stay for a couple months or you know like six months and they're like, yeah, but I didn't really get anything from that. You so won't. how how long do you say you should stay in a networking group? Like what's the, so, what's the shelf life? A lot of it depends on um, your industry. In real mm -hmm. estate, we're a high trust business, mm -hmm. right? So it is an instant. Um, you're lucky if you walk in and they say, I've got a referral for you and it actually turns into something. Mm -hmm. I think my first deal didn't come for about four or five months. And, and I knew that going into it because I actually took over for a friend of mine who was the realtor in that group and she had some life changes and said, I don't think I want to go anymore. Mm -hmm. And I knew how much business she got from it. And I said, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome B&I chapter. And if you step out and I take it, don't ever expect to get it back because I won't <laughs> get it back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, nice. and I took it and was thrilled because I had subbed in for her um, when she'd been out of town before. And so I, I kind of knew him. But um, I, I think, you know, a carpet cleaner can go to a BNI and clean up the first and second week mm -hmm. and, and get a ton of business instantly. But but I knew going in, it was going to take some time to build yeah. that trust yep. and, and show where I shine. And so I, I paid for two years in advance because I knew it was going to take time. Working by referral is not some fairy tale world. It's real. I've seen it. And you can too. Invest in yourself by learning how to run your business by referral at Michael's upcoming live event. It will be a day filled with hands-on, how-to, low to no-cost strategies that you can implement in your business right away. Learn how to run a business by referral that not only feeds your family, but feeds your soul. Go to www.gengenevents.com today. That's www.gengenevents.com. What are the keys to success, right? That's what to I was gonna ask, somebody yeah. who's who's attended, you know, that that that, you know, that okay, I've joined. What are what are some of the keys to success? Um, Your I success. think 
to me, it is not doing the bare minimum. I, I always think of the show, uh, the movie um, Office Space, where they have pieces of flair on their uniform and you never want to have the minimum pieces of flair. You want to not just show up to the 90 minute meeting every week. You want to get there early. You want it, their, their motto is givers gain. So it ties in very well with the seven mm -hmm. levels of communication, right? Okay. And the generosity generation. You want to give and, and you will get the business back. But first you have to show that you're worthy of it. You have mm -hmm. to show up big. You have to uh, be willing to pass those referrals and you have to meet with them one-on-one -on -one in between, mm -hmm. which is where we go to the, the networking with referral partners and the networking right. stack mm -hmm. um, and in the various parts of the seven levels of communication. So what parts of it have you, have you, have you put into play that you've really seen uh, help you in your networking, right? I mean, the networking stack, home court advantage, are, the, are those something that you're, you know, the handwritten notes, power notes, you know, what, what have you seen? So you, you, you attend the networking uh, event and, and it's not just about, you know, just going to the events every other week, right? Right. Or every week. It, it, it takes more than that, right? Oh, absolutely. Cause that's a bare minimum member in the group. And, and our group is not a bare minimum member kind of group. You won't fit. Yeah, I like that. We, we meet, we have the highest one-to-ones in our area for sure, which are the in between the meeting meetings um, where the magic really happens, where we get to know each other, where we deepen those relationships and learn details about each other's business and how we can best refer them. And that helps our antenna just fan out and be listening all week long for them. So um, yeah, those, those are, those are where you really learn about the person in their business. It's not the meeting. Yeah. Really and that's a, that's a, that's a nugget or a gem for everybody. Even if you don't join a BNI or any of the other SPI or any of these, these chapters of event is that the networking event is only a filter for you to figure out who do you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with. Right. Right. So if there's 40 people in the room, don't go in trying to meet all 40. Go in with really trying to figure out what four or five does it make the most sense for you to have a one on one next week with yeah. to 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 con you know have a conversation around. And and what they don't know, in my opinion, is that they're actually interviewing to be a part of your network. Right. They're interview so you're gonna ask seven or eight questions or maybe ten. And, and the nice thing about that is you, you don't talk that much. The other person talks a lot. So they think you're the greatest conversationalist ever. Yeah. And they answer these questions. By the time you're done, you've either qualified them in to your network or they've qualified themselves out of, of your network. You know that they're just not going to be a fit. It reminds me of one of our earliest episodes, Michael, where we talked about putting a plus or a minus next to people and what was the, the energy or the vibe you got from people and mm -hmm. just being able to go into uh, what I love about a networking group is you have a captive room of people mm -hmm. that you, and if using Jody, your, your advice of like, go visit them and find the room with the coolest amount of cool people, That's right. right? The most amount of cool people, you're going to set yourself up for success to use the entire 7L system, starting with the group. Jody, you're going to say something? Well, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I went with two thoughts in mind. One is, of course, I wanted to increase my business and grow my business. That's why I was there I'm looking to increase my circle. But the other cool part about it is the reason I created my tagline of always call Jody. As I said before, I joke with people. I want them to call me for everything and I needed to increase that network. So when my clients called me mm -hmm. and they said, Hey, we're thinking of writing a, a will and trust. Do you have an estate planner that you recommend? Mm -hmm. I have an estate planner that I recommend right. and that I know well, and I know he will take great care because it's reflective of me who I refer them to. And so my clients know I am a resource for them for anything that they could possibly want. And that's, that fits under the attitude, right? So I, I believe there's four keys to, I don't even know if I've ever shared this before, except uh, when I was in a BNI, as the BNI education chair, and then I was the vice president, and then I was the president, and the least uh, favorite of, for me was the president position, 
uh, the great place to be for BNI is former president because you <laughs> served, you've done your time, and now you don't have to do it anymore. So in my opinion. Now, is that there's four keys to success in networking, I believe. One, you know, one is attendance, right? Att you need to show up. Yeah. Uh, you need to attend on a regular basis. And, and without attendance, people can't trust you, right? You need, to, uh, you need to have attendance. And then attire, right? Attire. What you wear, people will judge you. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, they're going to judge you by what you wear. And, and, and listen, that doesn't mean that if you uh, do landscaping that you need to show up in a suit and tie, right? Wow. Landscaping, you need to wear a logoed button up or a logoed polo and, and, and look the part, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, and then the next one is, is attitude, right? So you've got attendance plus attire plus attitude and your attitude needs to not be, boy, I hope I get something today. It needs to be, you know, who can I help today? I need to find a good partner who I can refer out. And your attitude needs to be yeah. one of generosity and giving versus an attitude of I desperately need business. Because if you're in a network, you can do more harm than good to your business if you're in desperate salesperson mode. And then the last thing is attention, right? Attention. You've got to pay attention. You've got to be there 100%. And you've also got be, pay attention to your network for the needs they have. And when they have a need, be ready to, to, to filter that back to your networking group or to your referral network. And, and, and in many cases, I see people do pretty well with the first three. Where they fall short is the attention is that they just, they too often they're only think of them themselves and their needs and so on and so forth. Whereas like Jody was said, the radar, the radio antenna, right? I love that, that analogy because she had her radar out for when people have needs, then she knows where to place them. And, and that's the, the attention. You know what? You, you're, you're, it, it is like an army. It is like a, 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 an orchard, right? Yeah. And the trees need attention. It, it, you know, and the trees will give you fruit forever if you pay attention. But if you leave, and for, you know, they'll rot to death. So, and you have to follow through and be what you say you're going to be. That's, That's right. Huge, right? Yeah. I yeah. think of people that used to be members of our chapter and, and they fall out because they don't live up to the expectation that we have, which is high service, or they aren't uh, paying attention when they're in the meeting. They're on their phone. They're returning emails. The they're worst. on Facebook. Like we all put our phones away and we're taking notes mm -hmm. of what people are looking for that week. We're very interactive. You're attentive. Right. You got to pay attention. You know, what's so funny, Jody, is I actually delivered that that presentation of the four, you know, the four A's of, of networking. And there were people on their phone when I was giving that presentation on pay attention. I literally went and stood next to one of them. Now, they didn't last very long in the group, of course, but but it's just like one of the things we need to do. The fourth one is pay attention. Right. It was just like it was so perfect. Yeah, so, But it was one of those where you know, we, we, uh, you have there, I love the standard that you're keeping within your networking group, right? Which is, listen, you're going to deliver high quality service. Now you also said, uh, do what you say you're going to do. So how do you, how do you keep track and make sure that you, because in a networking group, you can get into a situation of over promising. Yeah. Right, you can get oh, in yeah. a situation where you tell one person one thing, you're talking to another, or you tell somebody else something else. It's like, how do you keep track of that? How do you, you know, what's your promise keeper system? So I, for me, it's very. I, I dial into specific things that I've done recently to help individuals, um, kind of like success stories on a weekly basis to my to my group. But um, as far as keeping promises. There's always a system attached, right? Like when you give a referral in our group, there is a system attached to that and there's expectations attached to that referral. It's not just a lead or else it isn't going in the system on a paper. This is business that can be yours if you don't screw it up. Mm -hmm. And so from there, it comes back with me. The first thing I do when I get back to my office is follow up on those and then inform the referrer 
what happened with that situation and then they go up on my leads board or if it's an instant appointment they go up on my other boards so it's a visual thing for me i'm a very visual person so if if i type something in or it's a text or an email it could get lost and forgotten right. so it has to be obnoxious sticky notes or on one of my boards around my face staring at me and glaring at me until i make sure that i live up to it out of sight, out of mind, right? I'm the same way. Like right in front of me right now in my office is a whiteboard, right? So it's things to do, people to call, you know, it, it, so, and I will tell you that if it wasn't up there, it probably would maybe be forgotten. At this point, I'm pretty good at using my, my phone calendar to remind me of things, but I will tell you, I'm still very visual. Out of sight, out of mind is very much a truism for me. I'm very good at paying attention to my calendar on my phone. I am not good at putting things in there. Mm. So thankfully I have an assistant that will put things in there for there me. Yeah. Um, but if she doesn't know, then, then we're really in trouble. But I just had a memory. I, I realized these boards are your fault. They're, <laughs> They're my fault? <laughs> they are. I yeah. love them. But yeah. um, I remember when you were first coaching me, you sent me to Home Depot to get whiteboards, four by four, yeah. to put up yeah. on my wall. Flat I, white panel board. Yep, and I drove a Prius hmm. down to Home Depot, and they didn't have the car. <laughs> <laughs> Did they cut it into two four by four squares for you, uh -huh. and it still didn't fit? Mm -mm. And so oh, I had to call my cute husband and have him come down and pick it up while I sat in the parking lot waiting. Oh my God, the damsel in distress, and I see Dave riding <laughs> in on his white stallion. <laughs> Wrapping the flat white panel board to his back, taking off with the white stallion, <laughs> and dropping it off at your house. I yeah. see that. I, you know what? Um, what would be cool? I think what would be cool, uh, Jody, if you're open to it, is um, I think a lot of people are always trying to organize the clutter around that type of stuff. It would be so yeah. cool to have like a spreadsheet that recreates what is on your whiteboard for people. Would that be something that you could sort of like? Without taking a picture of your whiteboard, right? We don't want no, people to well, see I think you, she could, could she yeah, take pictures of your whiteboards? Yeah, totally. They're, yeah, I think they're the pictures too. Right? these days, but they are a whiteboard. Of yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I think it'd be cool to, as a, as a download for this session, if you're willing to share it, that would be an awesome download for today. Um, and you guys can get that download if you go to referralspodcast.com. So thanks, Jody, for sharing that. Um, you guys go to referralspodcast.com. Hopefully we add some value to you and your maybe disorganized uh, lead cultivating process or system. But I know that's a big deal for a lot of people is like we bump into opportunity and then we don't know how to organize it to like follow through. So yeah. super awesome. Well, let's, let's end with this. Let's end with some last minute wisdoms. I'll, I'll go to both of you. Um, Jody, I'll start with you. Like somebody wants to up their game uh, winning the referral game with networking groups and referral partners. Like what is, like what's, what's the secret to success so that they really need to be thinking square? Well, one? you know, the thing that I failed to mention before that was a huge key component to me on why I landed on the group that I did is that it is a closed group category wise. So once I, as the realtor joined, no residential, I should say, mm -hmm. no other residential realtor can be in that chapter. Mm -hmm. So I have a captive audience where you go to chambers and there could be five or six realtors there. And people that are consistent with those chambers learn that realtors have very short attention spans. Mm -hmm. So just like any other networking group, you have to be willing to dedicate the time and not expect. It is not a fast thing, it's a relationship thing. And yes, it's a whole new circle of people, but that takes time to cultivate and for them to get to know, like, and trust you. Mm -hmm. So just be willing to, once you find your fit, stick to it for at yeah. least 18 months before you decide whether it works or not. So good, yeah, I love that. Michael, how about you? Uh, wisdom, a gem? Yeah, so, so networking is, uh, it's, like a, uh, it's like a current in the ocean, right? You have this, this, this red ocean or, or blue ocean, if you will, of business, and then you have these currents. And networking is that, that current that can make you go 120 miles an hour where before you were working hard to go 10 miles an hour yeah. because you're going to get the key contacts. What a lot of people don't know is the best referral sources – are typically small business owners. And where are they hanging out? They're hanging out at networking groups. So get into a networking group, find yourself a, a group where, 
where you, uh, you know, where you feel like it's going to be worth your dedication and commitment and then go back to the, the four A's, right? Attend, put it on your schedule, never miss a meeting, never miss a meeting, never. Even if you have a client appointment for a, a million dollar deal, make the meeting and move the, and move the million dollar meeting. It'll be worth it. And that type of commitment and then attire, Make sure that you are are dressed appropriately. Make sure that you're you're not showing up disheveled or or you know messed up or or you know uh, in shorts and and so on and so forth. Make sure you're you're dressing the part that's appropriate for your role in business, and then make sure you have the right attitude, which is I'm here to help, yep. not I'm number one. It's I'm here to help. That's the mantra of the generosity generation. And the last one is attention, right? Pay attention. Pay attention when you're at the meeting, it, it, like to hear the needs of the others and hear, hear the needs of your database, of your network, of your sphere. Hear their needs so that you can connect them uh, to the people you've been paying attention to in the meetings. And uh, that's really, I think, with, with just that part you're going to have a lot of success with networking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So good. So good. Yeah. Jody, if people want to send you referrals or connect with you on your awesome certified referral training capabilities or the book clubs that you do for 7L, where can people reach you? Best place is on any of my social media. So Jody Osofsky, last name is spelled O, S is in Sam, O, F is in Frank, S is in Sam, K, Y. Say that fast 10 times. Right. Right. Or it's on the screen. You can see it right now. <laughs> or email me jody j-o-d-i-e at always call jody.com perfect so good jody thanks for sharing your wisdom again on the referrals podcast michael thank you sir for passing on your wisdom as well and um it's another great episode we'll see you guys next time awesome. adios thank you.